All right, so Laura writes in on the channel asking what exactly is a SPIA? So let's talk about a SPIA, a single premium immediate annuity, otherwise known as an income annuity or a single premium income annuity. You could, all these things are the same thing. And what happens with a SPIA is that uh, this is the original annuity, an income annuity, and literally Social Security, the Ponzi scheme that it is, and it certainly is a Ponzi scheme, is an income annuity. Uh, your pension is an income annuity. So all these people say, I don't like annuities. Annuities are bad. I said, so you don't like Social Security. You don't like pensions. All right? I mean, it doesn't... To say an annuity is either... I, you know, I say this all the time, but an annuity is neither bad nor good. It just is. So to say it's good or bad, it doesn't make any sense. Could it be used well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Could it be used poorly? Absolutely. Tell me, I mean, what else? Can, I mean, tons. A hammer can be used well and a hammer can be used poorly. I mean, uh, I can't tell you how many people used to say, I don't want to talk about annuities. I say, so you're going to close your ears for some ungodly reason, because certainly it's not based on research, to a product that may enhance your retirement planning? It, does, it literally doesn't make sense to me. Now, does that mean you go out and buy it? No, but just to close your ears and sh turn your mind off to what, uh oh, these little kids, hey guys, hello, what's up boys? We're going for a walk. I like it. That's pretty cool. Did you guys have a good Christmas? Yeah. yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, boys. There's our neighbors up the street there. The Just be careful. The cutest boys ever. The dad's uh, Indian and the wife's uh, Southern. Uh, the cutest. They got four kids. They are the cutest kids ever, man. I love them to death. Oh, man, I love children. I never lived when I was 55 plus because I just like seeing little kids walking down the street. And for you who do live to 55 plus, I got no call. You can do what you got to do. But for me, man, there's nothing better than seeing kids walking down the street with their uh, dogs and you know, their little strollers with a little brother in there and everything. Oh, man. Ah, I'm just a big old baby when it comes to that. All right. So don't turn your eyes, close your, uh, shut your eyes to an annuity just because you've heard they're bad. Or Ken Fisher says he hates annuities. Ken Fisher says he hates annuities. Well, inherently because they compete with him for investments to manage. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, look, I like Ken Fisher. Um, I, I'm a fan of Ken Fisher. He's a capitalist capitalist for sure. I think he charges too much for his investments, but hey, uh, you know, people, I mean, I know people who went with Fisher Investment Management. I had this guy in uh, California, pretty big lib, and uh, he likes Ken Fisher. He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm probably paying more than I should, but they keep me informed. They, uh, they you know, they, <laughs> he liked them. He said, I ain't no call with him. Now, I've heard another guy tell me when he fired Ken Fisher that the guy was like cussing at him, the salesman, and that bothers me, but you know, you can't blame that on Ken Fisher. He's always a clown in every group of people. Anyway, so Ken Fisher doesn't like annuities because he doesn't get paid to manage annuities. Now, in theory, Ken Fisher could absolutely um, change the way he's structured. Uh, 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 yuck, eh. He could change the way his business is structured in which to offer annuities. I mean, you can't, be, at least for a commission. Um, what are you doing, buddy? Like, so if you're a registered investment advisor, you can't sell and holding yourself out as fiduciary, and, and my understanding is you can't sell commission products. And all annuities are commission-based products, as we see here today. I'm sure there's going to be some that are coming down the pike fast and furious because of the stupid SECURE Act. But at the end of the day, Ken Fisher, inherently to hold himself out as an investment advisor slash fiduciary, could not sell annuities. So inherently, he has to challenge the benefits of annuities because that's a benefit to his business. Now, Ken Fisher will readily agree. He doesn't mean all the nudies he hates. He just hates the uh, variable nudie types because they're fees on top of fees on top of fees. Uh, and I don't, I don't have any qualm with that at all with him saying that because uh, I, I, there's just not much benefit. Now, this comes from a guy who used to sell variable nudies. That's me. And I used to sell the ones from Ohio National and Pacific Life. And this is back in the early to mid-2000s. Uh, both products had a 10-year, both, a guarantee return of principal. So as long as you held it for 10 years, you're guaranteed to get your money back uh, no matter what. And given the crisis that started the, cent uh, the, yeah, started the century from 2000 to 2003, 
that guarantee of return of principal is big. And it gives you upside. I mean, literally, you said, look, we'll, we'll get you a portion of the market upside. You know, we're not going to guarantee you any market return, but we'll guarantee if the market goes south for 10 years, you will get your money back. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, in hindsight, those people probably would have been better in a naked account. Well, I know they would have been better. What I mean by naked account, one that had no... Actually, you know, I don't know that to be true now I think about it because I sold these probably 2004, 5, and 6. And then uh, the chaos of 2007 through March of 2009. Yeah, I'm not sure they would have been better off now I think about it. Um, but they knew the insurance company uh, was guaranteeing, no matter what, that they had... Uh, a return of premium after 10 years. On top of that, these, uh, these were variable annuities that guaranteed. Now, it might seem like I'm making a justification for my sales. I, look, I, I'm not at all. I had no qualm with these annuities whatsoever for the right kind of person because some people were afraid of the markets. Hey, um, and they needed to have uh, more exposure to stocks. They might have been better off in hindsight in <clears throat> a CD given the interest rates were so good back then. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't run the numbers. Either way, I'm pretty comfortable with my career as a salesman slash broker. Um, anyway. All right, so those gave you, those annuities were variable annuities that also gave you a 6% roll-up, which means uh, every year as an income stream, you are guaranteed an increase in income. Uh, let me give you an example. So they basically say, look, you put 100000 bucks in there after 10 I'm getting way off track of the income annuity, aren't I? So this will be a whole video about uh, other annuities as well. But anyway, after 10 years, you're guaranteed to get your money back if you want it. Now, also what this is, uh, if you held on the account, they will guarantee you, I think it's a 5 or 6% roll-up, which meant you are guaranteed 5% a year of your income uh, as an income for off your account value. And the account value is guaranteed to grow no less than 5%. Now, the account value was an income base. It was not a walkaway account. It wasn't walkaway money. And I cannot stress this enough when it comes to variable annuities. How much can I walk away with? We call that walkaway money. As I, I close the account out, how much am I going to get? Not how much income am I going to receive? All right. So how much the account value is your walkaway money? The income base is what your income base is based on. So let me tell you an example. You put 100,000 bucks in there. In 10 years, the account doesn't grow. You want to close the account out. You're walking away with 100,000 bucks, all right? Now, on an income base, on the other hand, a simple interest will just say, you put $100,000 in there, uh, and now the, the account value is still at 100,000 bucks. But your income base, because I had a 5 or 6% roll up, we'll just say 5%, meant that five, it will increase by 5% a year for as long as you sit, let it sit there. So that meant after 10 years, your income base is $150,000. I hope that makes sense. Now, you don't get to walk away with the $150,000. That is not walk away money. That is money that simply says, uh, we will give you a certain percentage of the income base that you can take every year. And a lot of times it'll be 5%. So you say, okay, I start with a hundred thousand um, bucks. In ten years, I know two things are going to happen. I can walk away with my entirety of my my money, hundred thousand dollars. Obviously, I made no money, but I didn't lose any money, other than you know, relative inflation and whatnot. Or I can take an income stream of that'd be five percent a year off a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which would be seven thousand five hundred. For the rest of my life, guaranteed. That's very attractive to some people, and it sounds a lot better than actually. If you run the numbers, it sounds a lot better than it really would be, um, just because what's happening here is you'll get that seven hundred, seven thousand five hundred dollars a year until uh, you die. Um, but what's going on is it is still coming out of your account value. So while your account value is only hundred thousand bucks, and you're guaranteed seven thousand five hundred a year. Let's just you say you don't get another year with no return. The hundred thousand dollars is reduced to ninety-two fifth five hundred. Now you're guaranteed that seven thousand five hundred until the account until you die. Even if the account is exhausted, you will still get that seven thousand five hundred. 
But essentially what's happening is you're eating into any uh, money you're leaving to your heirs. Not necessarily a bad deal, because don't forget, you're getting 7500 off an account that is truly only worth 100000 bucks if the markets did not cooperate. So that's a 7.5% distribution yield, not too shabby. Um, but <laughs> when you actually crunch the numbers, there, there's a lot more going on that's just like, yeah, it's not, it's just, it wasn't worth it. But now what will happen was more often than not, the market would give you more than the 5% roll up in most normal time frames. So in most normal 10 year time frame, you get more than a 5% uh, increase on your portfolio. The problem with the variable annuities are is that all those bells and whistles are expensive. So uh, you're paying an upwards of 3%, sometimes even 4% in fees for these things. And that's awful hard to make money when you're paying those kind of fees. Anyway, so that's how variable annuities can work. Uh, not, I just don't think they're worth it, actually. Um, and, and back then, you know, we didn't have Vanguard, for instance. You could have sell Vanguard. Vanguard was not geared towards at all to regular advisors. You just had to buy it directly through Vanguard. And so we had American funds with commissions and whatnot. And, there wasn't as many options as there are today. So I wouldn't do that anymore. If someone were to do that, I wouldn't say they're the worst person ever, but I just, I would shy away from them. All right, so income annuities, again, long-winded here, but, uh, you know, Pablo's got to go potty. Uh, they, it, it's literally the simplest thing ever. You say, here, insurance company, my name's Laura. Here's 100000 bucks. I'm just going to have a, I, I want income off the rest of my life. And the insurance company says, that's great, Laura. We'll give you 6000 bucks a year. That's it. As long as you're breathing, you'll get 6000 bucks a year. You have no residual. If you die tomorrow, the simplest thing, just like Social Security, if you die tomorrow, there's no residual left. No one gets the benefit whatsoever. If you live for 40 years, you're going to get $6,000 a year for 40 years. And that's, I mean, it is literally the simplest thing in the world. It's 100% guaranteed by the insurance company. No risk at all to you. Uh, in this day and age, it, it just isn't worth it for inflation adjustments because inflation um, makes it very, very expensive to buy those inflation adjustments, but uh, they work real well. The drawback is they're irrevocable. You can't, once you do it, uh, you usually have a 30 to 45 day free look period, uh, depending on what state you live in, where you can change your mind. But once those 30 to 45 days are up, it's irrevocable. You can't not do it after that. So it's, you don't get access to the money. Even if you have a, uh, I mean, any kind of issue, uh, you know, that you need, you know, the, the roof goes out and you have a leak, you can't call your insurance company and says, hey, send me 20000 for my annuity. It doesn't work like that. It is literally a debit to your, your liquid accounts and it's a credit to your income accounts. A debit means you're subtracting, a credit means you're adding. So in this case, from a balance sheet, you have a hundred thousand dollars is removed from your liquidity, your financial asset account, and instead is put on the balance sheet as an income. You have that income of you know uh, six thousand dollars a year for the rest of your life. That's literally how it works. No simpler than that. It's, which is nice because it does take some of the risk off the table for equities, equities being stocks or even bonds. You say, look, the insurance company is going to give me a certain amount of money each and every year. That means I can take more risk on the rest of my portfolio because that part of my portfolio is now locked away to a guaranteed product. And I'm telling you, man, of all the thousands of plans I've run, no one has ever sat there and said to me, man, I got too much income coming in, I can't sleep at night. No one, ever, no one has ever said and sat to me and said, man, I got too much sitting in CDs, I can't sleep at night. No one has ever sat, sat there and said to me, man, I'd have got too much guaranteed income, I can't sleep at night. It never works like that. It just works the exact opposite. Market's too high, market's too low, you know, Trump, Obama, something like that. That, I can't sleep at night. But when it comes to guaranteeing an income stream, which is what you need to put food on your table, a guaranteed source of income is freaking wonderful uh, from a <laughs> ability to hang in there perspective. So, yeah, sorry for the long-winded one, Laura. I didn't mean to, uh, to go off this tangent, but... Uh, <laughs> That's what I do. I will right, we'll see you.